Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. Today we're gonna to take you along on a week in the life of. Uh, winter time is definitely not as interesting to make videos for a week in the life of, because a lot of times we're pretty much just in the shop or the warehouse, and you guys are seeing all those videos that we're doing on the project updates, but this is a really good week. Um, I'm gonna walk in the shop here. Uh, it's a really good week to talk about what we what we're up to this is the week of the allentown um fairgrounds indoor swap meet in our area it's run by the carlisle um, crew that run all the carlisle shows they've been doing for a number of years now a show indoors so we're gonna be doing that at the end of the week mike's gonna take along and show you setting up for that and all that stuff which should be pretty fun um we're trying to pick up a bandsaw this week i bought an old do-all bandsaw for the shop we've been cleaning up i'll take you around here so um, where the bridge port is here uh, we're gonna we might slide the bridge port down just another couple feet a little closer to my stove but um, not a lot of closer we're gonna get rid of this old chemical cabinet we've been working on getting that cleaned out and that and all the chemicals moved to a different location um, and we're gonna put the bandsaw hopefully right here so um, we got to get that picked up um, Mike might tinker on his car a little bit uh, I've been uh, working this past weekend on getting this engine freed up, so we're shooting a video on that. This is just another old hot rod engine that we had at the warehouse and we brought it back. So I am working on that for a video, which will be, who knows when that'll come out. Um, Roadster, we got the Roadster pickup in. We're gonna be tinkering on that for a video. Um, so we'll show you a little bit of stuff with that. Uh, got a LaSalle transmission here pulled and uh, getting that ready to start putting that in the Sweetheart Roadster. So got a bunch of different stuff going along, going on. And uh, as always, we're gonna take you along for a ride and who knows what's gonna happen. I know we'll see something interesting this week because we're actually gonna get out of the shop and not just work on projects this week. So let's get started. All right, so first up, this flathead I've been working on. I started working on this uh, Sunday. Sundays, uh, I kind of work, I guess you could say, but it's more of a hangout session and friends stop by and I'm not good at just sitting down. So I usually work and tinker as we BS. So um, we brought this engine back. We started shooting a video on it. It's gonna be a longer video. Um, hopefully it's not a fail, but this is an old hot rod engine I bought from an estate in Delaware. My buddy Ben and I were picking and uh, bought this engine. It has an old, um, I think it's a Weber cam in it, which you may or may not be able to see here. But yeah, so that's an old Weber cam that it has in it. Um, it's been relieved for bigger valves. It's got adjustable tappets in it. Um, I think it's three and five sixteenths, which is um, like a pretty good overbore. Uh, it's basically a step below three and three eighths, which is kind of like the max you can go um, with these. And um, it has a four inch stroke. So it's got a mercury crank it. So it's got all the right stuff in it, on it. Um, it looks pretty good, the bores look good, but it is stuck, unfortunately. Uh, oh yeah, and it's got the cool little pennies in the heat riser area, which is an old, old trick. Um, so it is still stuck. I've been working on this. I got the valve train unstuck. Engine is still stuck. Next, I'm gonna tackle the cam. Uh, so I'm gonna try and, it's Monday morning, I'm gonna try and tinker just a little bit more on this before we start getting working on the Roadster pickup, which is one of our main um, uh, things we're messing with this week. So, see if I can get this thing freed up. I'm gonna try and turn it with the pipe wrench a little bit more, but I think that camshaft might be stuck in the bearings. That's our next thought, because um, it still isn't loose. Question is, 
may need to twist this this way. Oh, come out a little bit with it? I don't know. I mean, I guess, does that really matter? It shouldn't, as long as, it, as, shot, long as it's not binding. Because the, the shot can rotate this way. Yeah, as long as it's not binding, it won't be an issue. It's really... But, so we've gotten a lot of people ask us what's going on with the with the big red, with uh, the big truck that we got in us. Uh, Washington this past summer and we haven't really done any videos on it so we kind of did some maintenance on the truck early on drove around a little bit but we were still having some problems with the truck stumbling it was really inconsistent to start it when it was cold and on and on and on it was some weird stuff when we did the car we did all kinds of different stuff on the truck and it was still a little funny you had to keep the choke on like all the time until the thing was like super warmed up so recently uh, we started the truck to move it um, and then the next day we parked it and went to start it again the next day and it would not start for the life of it And it basically had no fuel So the fuel pump died and we put a new fuel pump in and I think that was what the problem was The fuel pump was slowly dying and was not putting out enough fuel pressure And that was part of the problem why it was acting a little funny So um, since then the truck has been starting a lot better and it runs a lot better like I took it out and around it has a lot more power it doesn't fall on its face when you try and like pull out which it used to always do so uh, kind of funny how that stuff works so this is a good test because it's been sitting for the whole weekend it's actually gotten cold again here where we're getting into the 20s and 30s overnight it's I don't know what it's been 30. it's like 35 today yeah, it's 35 today so now that we settle that it's not gonna start yeah it probably won't start but it, it's still an old truck so it's gonna take a little fiddling but be working on once it gets a little warmer out because it's hard to fit it in the shop with uh, how many cars we have in there it takes up like two and a half spaces uh, we're gonna be working on the ramps and stuff in the spring we have a goal of taking this truck with a hot rod on the back of it to the McCungy truck show the, the antique truck club of America has a big national meet in McCungy. we're lucky enough it's close by and I've always wanted to have something in the show so we're gonna bring this thing with the hot rod on the back and we're gonna hopefully, I gotta start twisting hot rod Jen's arm to see if she can do the, uh, the painting of the logo on the side for us before then as well. So that's my goal. Father's Day weekend, right? Yes, Father's Day's weekend. So that, that's the, fingers crossed, that is the goal for the big red truck um, to get it out. And obviously we'll be using it before then, but like that would just be so cool to bring it there with all the other big trucks and some kind of neat hot rod on the back. So that'll be fun. We're testing our luck. Big red started, so let's try and start this one. Yeah, we had to charge the battery because Steve and I didn't realize that the, we forgot to um, to get jump start sing, um, polarize. polarize. Jeez, jump start. <laughs> polarize the generator, and uh, the battery was getting worse and worse, and the car was starting harder and harder. And I'm like, wait, I don't know if we've ever polarized the generator, and we did it, and now it charges. So we had to charge the battery over the weekend. So hopefully, it's good now.
So it is Tuesday and we got a bunch done on the roadster pickup. We finished up getting front shocks mounted on the roadster pickup, which we'll save for the video when it comes out. Um, Steve today is working on just some odds and ends on the roadster pickup. So this thing had a, um, a vent, quote unquote, or use quotations, a vent for the gas tank. Um, which was basically what a 45 45 that they filled in and then drilled a hole through yeah and they put a little tiny pinhole in it but what we noticed is when the truck sat out in the heat uh it was cr still creating pressure because it's like a i don't know if you can see the hole it's like it's tiny it was too small of a hole and it wasn't enough of a vent so the thing would like release pressure when you would like sit in the truck when it was hot and it was very, very scary to have like a mist of fuel go on your back of your neck. <laughs> so um, we're going to reuse this. Obviously, we don't want to be welding on a tank. So what you know that will work fine. So we're going to. Um, we found a 90, which is somewhere. Steve's got his pocket. Uh, a 90 that we're going to use that actually has a flare fitting inside. So we're going to run a piece of uh, the copper nickel brake line off of that down underneath the car and away from everything. Uh, but that will give us a, a nice size hole and a good vent and it'll also still look old but be kind of safe so that's taken care of um, we're working on there's a little hole in the wood here so steve's you know, has this little patch he's working on it just to patch i just found that in the bin yeah well, already painted you're, and everything yeah, you're working on it yeah <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna use that to fill that hole just so things don't fall through the bed it, it should work out good but the, otherwise the wood and this is pretty good. Um, yeah, so that's what we're kind of working on today. He's buttoning up some stuff on that. Mike's at the warehouse, we'll check in and see what he's up to. What's up guys, it is Tuesday. We're at the warehouse, it's cold. Uh, winter time, it gets pretty chilly in here, uh, not heated or air conditioned. So in the winter time, it's cold or colder than it is outside. The building is old concrete, so it holds the chill in like a, like a freezer kind of. It's pretty chilly in here today. Um, so we had some pretty neat updates at the warehouse. Um, we had a helper, um, Luke, he helped us film over the summer and he was back from college for like six weeks. So he was here at the warehouse helping me do a bunch of stuff. Um, we did some organizing. So we got some pallet racking from a viewer probably in the last week in the life of I mentioned it, um, but we got some stuff set up. So let me set this piece down I need to ship and I'll show you guys what we've done. So I got this stuff set up here for like a shipping area. So parts that are waiting to be picked up are staged here. So they're out of the way. So Matt doesn't sell something when he comes over by accident that's already paid for and waiting to go out. Um, move some power racking over here. Uh, these are all of Matt's uh, keeper engines down here that are just waiting to be sent out and gone through. Um, still got parts laid out all over the place. I need to sort and go through. It's uh, never-ending struggle um put this pallet racking up over here <coughs> excuse me for wheels and hubcaps got everything organized you know model a 28 29 30 31 18 17 16 wide five uh, it's a mess i've been going through trying to make nice sets um let me get down to the steel full steel wheels you know 40 ford 46 to 8 so on and so forth Got all of our hubcaps here sorted. Luke did a fantastic job and went through and organized all of our hubcaps, made sets, cleaned everything. And we got our trim rings down here and then we got these boxes of singles so I can go through. I took photos of what we have. So if we get more, I can make sets. Um, I've been doing moving some stuff around. So this so Chevelle stuff's just here for the meantime. I'm gonna put it over there uh, probably today. Um, then we moved this stuff here to make this little alcove that is headlights and taillights and steering wheels. So I had him, Luke, go through and organize everything, um, put together sets and try and organize it the best that he could so I can just go through, pick stuff off the shelf, and take photos to the list. So there's still pallets of parts from random different picks that I need to go through. Um, we are also preparing for an auction. 
So that's what I'm going to be working on this week is putting pallet lots together. Um, it's going to be sometime in the spring. We haven't solidified a date yet, but we're working on that. I need to get everything laid out on pallets, eventually take photos and all that stuff for the auction company. So I'm going to work on that this week, laying parts out and making a giant mess. So let's get to work. I got a few things to ship this morning and then uh, let's lay out some pallets. Got tractor. This should work. Batteries junk, of course. Well, today's Wednesday, first off. Yeah, it's Wednesday. I'm already effing annoyed. <laughs> uh, lifting device, battery's dead. We're picking up a bandsaw. And then somebody at this estate, someone parked the tractor right in front of the lift, and the battery is junk in it, and we couldn't even jump start it. So we're going to try and push the, or pull the tractor out of the way so we can get the lift to the lift to lift the bandsaw, to put it on the trailer to get it. And then once we get it home, we have a whole other <laughs> series of ordeals. It's easy at home. What gives you content, right? Yeah. It's, it's easy at home. My tractor starts, and I have a jump starter there. Yeah, it's true. We do have a jump starter. We should have brought start, it. We move it out of the way, right. and then we just track the trailer, in, and I have an overhead hoist. Done. Well, let's bars. Done. see if she rolls. We can lift the world now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I you about that. Hopefully we can get enough height. That's the... Yeah. yeah, I can't believe that was the perfect length to fit in there. Oh, we got, there's a chop saw behind us. We could have cut it if we had to. All right. <laughs>
Ready? bandsaw in place. This time we were able to get some nice solid bars that we could roll this thing like Egyptians. Everybody made fun of us with the bridge port that I didn't have that set up. So we got them this time and it worked out very well. So we were able to roll this in the corner, um, get this set up. This thing is, it's a what, ML model, uh, dual bandsaw, and it is fully functioning. The, um, the gentleman we bought this from um, was a mutual friend and he had bought a bunch of stuff from a machine shop Basically went to an auction just like we do. He bought a whole corner of machine shop for super cheap. They came with a lathe, all kinds of tooling, this bandsaw, a brake, blah, blah, blah. And he lost his place where he was using all the stuff at, storing it, and we were able to buy it. So he had got this thing all working. He had a phase converter, which we actually got with this that we're gonna keep this just in case we ever need one. Um, and he let me cut with this thing, it was really great. I like the idea, I have a handful of friends that are using these VFDs on pull maxes and, and different three-phase machinery in smaller shops that do not have three-phase. They work really well. I like the idea on these that you can very easily change the speed of the motor. I know the do-all, you can, you can move the knobs and change it, but it'll be pretty handy. It'll solve multiple problems. We can put it over here, just adjust the knob, get the, the um, travel speed where we want it, the blade speed, and uh, we can do it right on that. So um, they're pretty cheap. Mike's gonna, he's done these before, so. Well, I'm going to let, this is Mike's expertise, so he's done some of these, so we're going to let him um, wire this all up one day when we get some time, but super stoked to get a real do-all. Um, it's kind of hard, just like my bridge port, to find this stuff that's like the in-between size. A lot of do-alls, a lot of bridge ports, they're like massive, so in our shop, space is at a premium as always. I couldn't have a do-all bandsaw with like a three foot by three foot table on it. I need one like this, it's got a smaller table, and this is perfect for what we need. So, nice little upgrade. Didn't get a lot of work in the shop done today, but we got a kick-ass new piece of machinery for the shop. Yeah, you were yanking on, I was scared to yank down that hard. Well, that's the idea of heating it. You, you know, it'll give it the stretch that you can do that. Right. Next time we use the torch. Yeah, that, that's why that guy was doing that. It was like you yep. just... Oh, did he use a torch? Yeah, a guy used like a little handheld propane torch and he went over and heated over the crack and he kind of, I think he pulled down a little bit as he did it. Yep. And that probably helped. Yeah. You could feel it loosen up rather yeah. than just hoping with the dissolving it or... See, you got a spur running there too, but... That's the one we have, we've had. He flipped it over. Give me a very, very good razor knife because uh, this thing get a little close to my finger. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we waited for you to show up because this is hard work. This is technical yeah. work that we did. Ooh, Ooh, now it's going down more. Mm-hmm. You, you can go almost all the way down now. Yeah. Well, should we burn? Should we burn it more now that you can get in there? Fire? Fire? Fire. Uh, Soften up those spots that are because if you maybe I could just open it enough. Well now it's open enough I could spray in there and we can actually Oh well, you got you had plenty in I'm talking about opening sheet. Oh shit. Yeah. Also enter all the people that are gonna yell on the internet about the gloves, the glasses, you right. Champion, can you take that clamp off? Yeah. What's up, guys? Today is Thursday. Uh, I'm at the warehouse, of course. Um, we are packing up for the Allentown uh, Automania swap meet. Uh, I got some stuff downstairs already. Got to pick up some tables and grab a few last minute things. But I wanted to show you what I've been working on for this auction. So I basically laid everything out. Um, still have plenty more to do. I got, you know, hoods, door skins. I'm making pallets of like items. We're gonna sell stuff in bulk. Uh, for the most part, there's gonna be some items we're gonna sell individually, but I've been putting pallet lots together. Um, we're gonna 
put this 2829 pickup project. There's a frame underneath um, up for sale, up for auction. Um, so just been busting my butt, pulling things out of the back room that I had set aside and organized and making lots to hopefully auction off. Um, we haven't set a date 100%. Uh, as soon as we have a date, we will announce it, of course, and publicize the auction. Um, but I believe it's going to be early spring, uh, March or April. Uh, it's going to be an online only auction. It's going to run for 30 days. So once we announce it, it'll go live for 30 days for you guys to pre-bid. And then the final day will be the auction where I think the way Cabin Fever does it, uh, they end every like two minutes. So hopefully there'll be some stuff that you guys want. We're going to pull some early Ford parts out as well and some other things we have. It'll probably be 200 to 250 items or more. We haven't really decided what we're doing, how much we're doing yet. But, you know, this is what I've been working hard on, getting our stuff organized and getting uh, this stuff laid out so we can have a successful auction. So I'm gonna load up my pickup truck, head to Allentown and set up. It starts uh, tomorrow, I think at lunchtime. So I'm gonna dr drop a bunch of it off and get a bunch of it set up and then come back tomorrow morning and finish it up, price everything, make sure it's all ready to go for when the doors open. So I'm gonna head downstairs, load up my truck. Of course, it's also raining today, so I gotta work around all that junk. So let's get to work. All right. There we go. So, uh, crazy weekend with uh, the Allentown Swap Meet. Uh, kind of rounded out our, uh, our weekend. Uh, that's always a fun event, a uh, good social event. It was yep. just ridiculously packed. Uh, first half of the day, Friday and Saturday, when everybody rushed in, it was like shoulder to shoulder. Uh, sold a little bit of stuff, talked to some people, and it's always good to get out of the garage for a couple days uh, in the middle of the winter here. So we um, didn't have snow. That's always a good yeah. thing about that show. When it snows, it's usually very dead and depressing because yes. <laughs> loading in and out is not fun in the snow. So, but yeah, we got a bunch of stuff done this week. It was very productive between getting the machine, the, the uh, bandsaw and all the work on the cars and et cetera, et cetera. Stuff at the warehouse. Yeah. It's uh, good for a, um, for a, a week in the winter yes. this was pretty uh, eventful so that's why we decided to film it so thank you guys for following along appreciate it Enjoy.